Good day, y'all. Um, this is a follow-up to an appreciative advising session uh, presented by Tara Connolly, Jennifer Pierce, and Courtney Schachter a few weeks ago. And one of the assignments uh, for Lauren Stevens of uh, Western Nevada College and uh, me of Tr uh, Truckee Meadows Community College was to provide further discussion on the disarm phase of appreciative advising. So um, Lauren is not here uh, to do this uh, video summary, so I'm going to uh, take that uh, take that responsibility and, and um, complete this. So the disarm phase of appreciative advising is the, in essence, the making of a positive first impression with the student, building rapport, creating a safe, welcoming space as students come into your uh, advising session. A brief overview um, of appreciative advising uh, is uh, listed here in terms of the intentional collaborative practice of asking positive open-end questions that help students optimize their educational experiences and achieve their, their goals. Uh, the six stages are disarm, uh, discover, dream, design, deliver, don't settle. Not going to get into those other ones because our task is regarding disarming and that making of a first uh, impression with the student. Uh, one of the things as Lauren and I were talking about what we were going to talk about because the, the trio who provided the training were so thorough in uh, providing the appreciative, uh, in, uh, appreciative advising uh, concept. Uh, we we decided that we would talk about the disarm phase relative to when the first impressions may really occur of advising. So, are the first impressions, uh, you know, as they come into the advising session, or are there certain situations that create maybe uh, uh, an impression before that uh, that happens? So today we're going to be examining the pre-advising disarm phase, uh, as well as extending appreciative advising beyond advising. Uh, so that's where we're going with this. So uh, Oscar Wilde had a famous quote. I think the quote's been attributed to a number of different people, but um, the, in terms of you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And so oftentimes the uh, in, impression once they get into the advising session is maybe the second or third impression that they might have of advising. So we need to think about that because uh, we want them to have a positive first impression. Uh, we di then went through just some exercises, uh, examples of, of people sharing maybe their most welcoming first impressions they've experienced and then thinking of an example of one of the worst first impressions they've experienced. It's interesting, people were having a really hard time of identifying some of the most welcoming first impressions. It was a lot easier to identify some of the worst first impressions. So that makes it even more a paramount uh, to, to get it right in terms of our first impressions to students. So we asked the questions, when do the first impressions of advising happen at your college? Uh, and then what are these impressions like relative to the concepts of appreciative advising? And rather than just have a general discussion with myself right now, we're just going to go on to maybe some of the concepts that were discussed. Uh, one of the concepts was how user-friendly is making an appointment. Can students make appointments online? Uh, whether it's an in-person or a Zoom appointment, uh, easily. Is it readily accessible to where they can go in, make the appointment, find the time, select the advisor, etc. Um, and then relative to getting to that first appointment, really how, how well organized is the website uh, so uh, that students can find the appointment uh, piece of it. Uh, also, uh, another area where students have first impression with advising is the orientation. Uh, so how is the orientation conducted? Is it online? Is it in person? If it's online, are, is there a video introduction welcoming the student to make it more personal? Uh, or is it pretty much just a Canvas course that students just go through without any sort of connection 
uh, with an advisor. Uh, and then we talked about some others, um, and you may have some other thoughts uh, about that as well in terms of these pre-advising considerations. We then talked a, about, a little bit about the action plans of maybe really taking a look at the, at the websites, taking a look at our orientation again, even to the point of a first impression as students are walking from the parking lot, can they find us? Had a student the other day who could not find advising and went home. And only because I called her uh, and said, hey, we can still meet via Zoom, not knowing what her situation was, did I find out that, um, that the student uh, didn't get any help finding advising other than a series of really complex directions to, to, to get to the advising center. So that's an issue that I think we need to address. Uh, so some of the other action plans, again, review the department's web page, uh, explore approaches to incoming and outgoing calls, appointment scheduling, etc. And like I said, observe the walk from the parking lot to the department. And, um, and then really invite new students to gather insights on that first impression, I think was a, was a really good suggestion. So then we went a little bit into the extending appreciative advising and uh, one of the concepts was considering goals, introducing just the disarm stage or possibly all appreciative advising teachings to more areas of the campus. And then if we had goals in this uh, regard to set the set SMART goals, um, then asking each other, how can we each be involved in extending the appreciative mindset? Uh, so in, in possible in different meetings that we're in, uh, we could be a role model, um, consider creating a disarm activity with some of the various diverse committees that we serve on, uh, building new relationships and build on those relationships with the concept of, of the disarm phase. Uh, another suggestion was including as an agenda item for a Senate meeting uh, for faculty. Uh, because Sometimes uh, instructors don't understand the importance of the disarm phase within the classroom. Classic example from a school that I was at in the physics department was uh, an instructor on the first day of class making a stern statement. So everyone look around to your left, look around to your right. Only one of you will be in this class and pass the class by the end of the, by the, end of the term. Eh. I don't know if that really sets a, a welcoming tone. Um, and then we just had some concluding thoughts and, and discussed uh, maybe what we might do, some of the, maybe the low-hanging fruit of some of the things that we could uh, work on, we could improve upon. And um, then uh, we, we talked about some of those uh, issues and then we concluded this, the, the session. So hopefully this little brief summary of what we went through, uh, which lasted an hour, <laughs> um, uh, and, and, but the summary could still be helpful in terms of creating thoughts about both the pre-advising first impressions and then about extending uh, the concepts of the disarm phase uh, beyond advising. Thank you very much and hope you uh, found this useful.